Hello everyone, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me on my craft room adventures. Today I have a bit of a different video to share with you. I know in this kind of scary time a lot of people are organizing and reorganizing, so I thought I'd share a tour of my craft area with you. Um, Contrary to my username, I actually don't have a designated craft room. I live in a small apartment and this craft area is located in my living room. So I'm hoping that some of my tips may be helpful for those of you that also have small craft spaces. First off, I'm gonna just show you an overview of what my craft area looks like. I have a desk with two Alex units one of the white Alex units which holds my scan and cut and also one cupboard that has all of my random craft supplies. Starting with the cupboard, up top I have my stamp platform. In this little, what is it, a little basket, I keep my organizing supplies for stamps and dies, just the pockets that I use. And this holds my old label maker and just random bits up there. Here are my Arteza brush pens. I just have the caps numbered so they're easier to find. My Karen Brush Markers Pro, which I got for Christmas and unfortunately I have yet to use. And this basket holds my embossing folders. The baskets I'm using, by the way, are by a company called Curver in just a silver color. Now one shelf down, I have my colored cardstock. This is just like more affordable craft store cardstock and also just like masking paper desert storm by nina just paper i don't reach for a whole lot and then this little drawer box holds my most used mink foils which is just silver hollow gold and rose gold in this drawer i just keep images that are already cut and colored but i haven't used on a card yet some drawers are empty and the last uh the bottom three just hold brush pens by Koi and Ecoline. My printer is the TS5050 by Canon and I specifically bought this because it has the feet from the back and I actually can print on Nina and on Strathmore Bristle Smooth with this. Down below I have my brother printer which is a laser one just for foiling. Here I have some extra cutting plates, my Fiskus trimmer, I don't use as often anymore because I got another one, which you will see in a bit. And next to that I have some Lawn Fawn full-size paper, the, the 12 inch, and also my glitter cardstock. Uh, next is just some colored paper, just the thin kind I use for envelopes sometimes. And down below, I have my We Are Memory Keepers punch board. This is the box and the envelope punch board. And I use these fo file folder stands. I don't really know what they're called from Action. They're really affordable, just clear ones. And I use them for paper, for those kinds of things, just to keep them straight. I have another drawer box and I just have some extra ink pads that I don't reach for a lot, uh, which are the Versafine Claire and also some other brands of black and brown ink and that's pretty much it in there so I still have some room. Uh, on the white Alex unit I have my brother scanning card. The model I have is called I believe CM300 and I cut almost all of my stamps out with this. I barely buy any coordinating dies because they're just really <laughs> expensive. So for the content of the drawers the first has kind of some random bits, some post-its, my laptop, my old cell phone, uh, the items that go with the brother scan and cut, and since my sofa is right next to it, I have some hand lotion, tissues, remotes, just that kind of the stuff. Then the fun drawer, uh, my distress inks and my distress oxides. I also keep my waffle flower mini media mat in there. My acrylic block, the inks I'm using mostly, and I just keep them in a lid of one of the IKEA boxes, the mini distress inks, just so that I can just reach everything easily. And it also holds my regular craft mat. 
Down below, I actually have a double drawer, which I will show you how I did that later in the video. And that holds all of my coloring mediums. I have a little spray bottle in there. Uh, the Copic sketch markers I have are in those little cups. Some already cut down cardstock to A2. Some card bases, also some colored card bases just behind there. Just so I have them on hand. My blending brushes, which are the tailored expression ones. And I have some jelly roll pens just in this little basket. My Copics, the Zig markers, the real brush pens, and just some acrylic holders I got from TK Maxx, or I believe in America it's called TJ Maxx. The Copic chows I keep in the display you can buy for them. And I just have them sorted by color. I left some space in between the color families so that I don't have to redo the entire thing once I get new ones. And uh, you can't really see that behind there, but there's another row of baskets with just some random tools. Scissors, just wire snips, uh, more brush pens, and my corner chomper, and just random tools really. I also keep my uh, water brushes in this little uh, compartment and that finishes my coloring drawer. Below that I have embellishments. I have lots of glitter. This is the chunky glitter. And then I have just, you know, rhinestones, sequins, all that in those clear containers that I got off of Amazon. Some emboss embossing paste, stickles and the fair, uh, pixie dust or fairy dust, no, pixie dust it's called. Crystal glaze, the shimmer spray, some nouveau drops, more glitter, and more glitter. <laughs> okay, you see a pattern. Just some brushes that I use for splattering, a spoon that I use for glitter. My bleed proof white from Dr. PH Martins, just to, you know, any kind of embellishment. And then there's my random drawer which has uh, metallic watercolors by Fintech and the Nouveau Shimmer Powders, I believe they're called. Sorry, it's on, on its head. And the rest I will talk about in a minute. On the right side of my desk, I have in the first drawer just embossing stuff, embossing powders, my ink pad, the embossing body and the powder tool, stamp cleaner, regular cleaner, just a cloth, uh, and a chamois and the scrubber pad and just some wipes or just tissue paper. Next down is adhesives. I keep tape runner, just liquid adhesive, foam tape, poster tape, blue dots. Those are the thin foam tapes, which are my absolute favorite. Unfortunately, I can't get them in anywhere in Europe or I haven't found. If any of you know where to get them, please let me know. In the back there's some score tape, the thicker foam squares, and that's pretty much it. Now below that I have my winter and holiday stamps. I just keep them separate because I didn't have room in the other drawer. Uh, I have them sorted by company, and within that company sorted uh, by alphabet, just so that I can find everything. First up is Lawn Fawn, and Mama Elephant, and back in, uh, in the back is Hello Bluebird. And that way it's really easy to find everything I need. And in the back I have some sentiment stems in German, which I don't use all that much, but they're nice to have on hand. And in the middle I have some background stems by Hello Bluebird, MFT, Tailored Expressions, and uh, Simon Says Stamp and Studio Light. Next is another double drawer, which holds my uh, trim and scoreboard by We Are Memory Keepers, my most used paper, which is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth and Nina Solar White, and also some vellum and acetate, my big rolls of foam tape, the 6x6 inch paper pads by Lawn Fawn. I also have some foam tape in the back and my colored cardstock by Lawn Fawn and Hero Arts. And I also have some white cardstock in there. And on the left side of my desk, I have my most used tool drawer, which just has my 
a little guillotine trimmer by Tim Holtz, my cutting plates and my mini misty, and um, below there is just a little cutting mat. Up next is another double drawer which holds the rest of my stamps and all of my dies. I just have them sorted by company and within that, as, you, as before, by alphabet. Uh, in the middle is Lawn Fawn, then down at the bottom there is, uh, is Mama Elephant, and next to that is Hello Bluebird. I just keep the taller stamp sets right there in the back, jo just so that it's easiest to flip through. And back there are all of my dies. I keep them in A5 pockets, just with magnetic sheets on the back. And that way I can just flip through. I did make some little dividers just to have them by company and by type of die so that I can find everything easily by just, you know, flipping through. I don't have that much space left, so I will have to come up with the solution eventually. But since we're not quite there yet, I don't have to. I use these A5 pockets and I will go into that a bit more detail later in the video too. That's that. Below that I have my another pretty much random drawer. I have some large acrylic blocks that I didn't have room for anywhere else. A power bank, my microphone, which is the blue snowball microphone. A camera, an external hard drive and some Stuff that I will need for interactive cards, LEDs, I got the LED Chibitronics kit by Lawn Fawn, just some coins, nylon string, uh, beads, action wobblers, all that kind of stuff. And the bottom one just has my old blending brushes, some stamped images, cello bags, and just some random knickknacks. Now here you can see in detail the double drawer. I basically just screwed both drawers together so that I would have double the height because for things like Copics or, or stuff like that some things you want to store they're really not that handy when they're lying down you want to be able to grab them and this worked out perfectly I've done it a bunch of times it's also perfectly reversible I took it apart I put it back together I already had those with three drawers which was a bit lagging when you pulled it out, but two drawers works perfectly fine. Now it really is super easy to make this work. I'm not that handy and I was able to do it myself. It doesn't look pretty, but it works great. Um, first what you want to do is loosen the screws on the top drawer, uh, the, the big round one that you see there, and that allows you to remove the front of the drawer. That way you can just pull out the bottom, put the front back in, and uh, tighten the screws back up and that way you already have the right height for the drawers. I'm just pointing to the metal pieces because when you screw in the piece of wood in the inside which I'm showing you here you just want to make sure to avoid those areas when you screw in the connector piece uh, because those won't be able to uh, to screw in all the way because of the metal and then your drawer won't close. Um, I just use some small screws. It doesn't have to hold much. There isn't that much weight on it at all. And I just used some uh, board that was actually supposed to be for the back of a cupboard that my dad had lying around. And this was actually really awesome to use because you could actually just use some heavy duty scissors or garden shears. And I just cut it down with those, used some tiny screws and like a handheld little thing to screw them in. It was done really in a few minutes time and you have double the height in your drawers. I actually did that on three of my drawer sets. Um, this is the one that holds all my stamps and dies. And just for reference, uh, this is one of the uh, narrow drawers and one of the bigger drawers of the narrow Alex. And the pockets I'm using are A5. So you quite have quite a bit of room in that drawer, height-wise. Now, on my desk, I like to keep things pretty cleared off because as this is my living room, I just like to have just a few bits out. Here I just have some a little container that has my liquid glue so that it's ready to use. My most used tools, just scissors, uh, my little jewel picker tool, 
a craft pick, uh, tweezers, reverse tweezers, then I have uh, my shimmer pen, glaze pen, and white gel pen in different width. What is that? My bone folder, my Teflon bone folder, and just some random pens in the third cupboard uh, or compartment. In this uh, little acrylic thing, I keep currently uh, stamps I'm currently using, pieces I already die cut, just current projects that I'm working on. And this little dish is just to, you know, keep some scraps, adhesive backings, just, you know, to keep them out of the way. For my filming setup, I'm using one IKEA lamp with a daylight bulb, the Remarkable Creators Mount by Archon, which has a stand for my phone and also for my iPad. The monitor on the right is connected to a PC, and the software I'm using as a viewfinder, hello there, is called Reflector 3, and it just uses a wireless connection to see my what I'm doing so that I know when I'm in frame. The light on the right side is a ring light by a company called Newer, and I just have a diffuser on there, and I got that off of Amazon as well. And both lights just have neutral daylight. Here you can see them on. This is also just an LED bulb I got off of Amazon, and this one is LED as well. And there you can see. The viewfinder is really super helpful because I was really struggling to know when I'm in frame. So that's been really, really helpful. And the craft mat I'm using is by Arteza. Now just to show you a few things in a little bit more detail. For my most used cardstock or just things that have random scraps, I use these pockets by a company called Elba. And they are just great to store just also little pieces of paper. For my stamps, I'm using these A6 pockets by Durable. They're actually meant for passports, I believe. And they're just super, super sturdy, thick plastic. And they are the perfect size for regular uh, stamp sets. As you can see here, they fit them perfectly. I just keep an A6 just paper insert in there, just as a backing. And then my stamp set just goes in there. I also add a label up top with the name of the company and the name of the stamp set, just for reference and that it's easier to find. I specifically chose this size of pocket because as you can see, I don't have that much room and regular stamp pockets just were way too wide to fit as many stamps in my drawer. I also use magnet paper. I just got the cheapest one usually I can find it's not as sturdy or as nice as I would like it, but it's just, you know, for storage in my drawers, I don't want to spend a ton of money on that. I just use some paper that I cut down to A5 to fit in these pockets. And the ones I use for my dies are by Staples. Uh, they're called, I believe, M by Staples. And it's for their ARC disc binder system. And I just buy them in a pack of 25 and they're pretty affordable, so it's a good solution for me. And for my taller stamp sets, like the one that Hello Bluebird or MFT make, uh, I just cut one of those pockets apart and just use a little bit of tape on one side, and I have a pocket that fits that stamp set perfectly. For my dies, as you can see, I'm just adding usually one or two sheets of just white, thicker paper, then my magnet sheet, and I add all the dies that I can fit just to make, you know, make good, good use of the room. And then I add the little labels. The label maker I'm using is my brother and it's called the P-Touch Cube. And I just recently got that because my other one kind of died. And this just has those little cassettes in there uh, that can be up to 12 millimeters wide. It also has a button that will cut the um, label for you. And what I really love about this is it's uh, Bluetooth connected. So you just have an app on your phone. You can choose different fonts, whatever you want. And you can just hit print and it prints out your label. So it's really easy. Now, lastly, what I want to show you for storage solution is those little binders that I use also by a company called Elba. 
and I use them for my stencils for one. They just have those little elastics just to make sure nothing falls out. And they have clear like little pockets in there. And that's where I keep my stencils. I can just flip through like a little flip book, see whatever I have there. I just keep the backing usually so that I know, you know, the name of the stencil and stuff. And this has been really, really nice because I know nothing will get lost even with smaller stencils and stuff. And I use the same kind of folder for all of my color charts. I just really like to have them in one place. Those are for the Karen brush markers. On the left are the Zig markers. Then next to that are the Arteza brush pens, just so that I have a good reference. The Tombos, the Colero, or I believe in America it's called Fine Tech. Um, Distress inks, the, uh, the mini ones, and Distress oxides. The Versafine Claire inks and also my Copic color combinations. I also have the uh, hex chart by Suddenly Elnock in there and I have lots more room for more color charts. Now the little random drawer that I had in my white Alex at the bottom, those are just used for when I'm crafting. I have this acrylic container that I just put on my desk to just throw dice into stamps because I used to be just looking for things all of the time in my on my messy desk while I'm crafting and this has really been a lifesaver it's just great you know where everything is if you don't use it at the moment just I toss it in there and it's fine this is uh, a dish that I use for my Copics uh, I just like to have all of the colors that I'm using open and I don't want to mess up my desk so just use a little dish to have them on there and lastly I just have this old IKEA box lid that I put all my markers in just so that I'm sure they're not rolling off the desk. And that finishes off my craft area tour. I really hope that this was interesting and may have been helpful to you if you also have a small space to work with. If you have any questions or suggestions, just leave them in the comments down below. I'm always happy to help. Thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel for more crafty videos. I hope wherever you are, you're staying safe and healthy. Have a wonderful day. Bye.